reputable <laughs> companies. Bob. Yeah. They called you Bob. <laughs> Why I, did they call I, I let that one go. I, I, did, I didn't like <laughs> Yeah, Bob. Welcome Ready? to the... Oh, sorry. No, you can do no, it. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Welcome to the Recharge Podcasts. We're your hosts. I'm Rob. I'm Adam. And I'm Will. Today, we are talking about what is stopping you and you and me and anyone watching from buying a Chinese e-bike. At Eurobike, there was a massive haul dedicated to... Uh, bikes and accessories and parts from suppliers from the Far East Asia and suppliers that you've probably never heard of. But what is stopping anybody buying a Chinese e-bike? Like, is it the fear of it? And then we're going to come on to a completely different topic, but the actual weights of e-bikes. Like, these are race e-bikes. And there was a cool article that we'll share um, that showed real weights of, of enduro e-bikes that people are riding and racing. And then there's some new stuff from Bosch and Fazua, which is uh, pretty cool. So first off, what is stopping you buying a Chinese e-bike? And what what is, should we define what is a Chinese e-bike? It may sound obvious, but what, what does that mean? I think that's quite sensible, like defining them, because ultimately they all kind of come from China, the Far East, or, you know, Taiwan, Vietnam, Vietnam and there's, there's a whole host of that area where pretty much most bikes are made. So... Yeah, it's kind of a confusing statement, but when we say Chinese e-bike, it's non-brand. Well, it's branded, but with a brand you don't know. I mean, how would you define it? I would define it, yeah, exactly like you're saying, a brand that you don't know and don't recognize. Because let's be honest, most stuff, not just bikes, but a lot of stuff is produced in the in Asia, China, Far East, which is awesome. The manufacturing there is is amazing. My car is built in China. Yeah. And it's uh, probably one that you didn't think would be built in China, but it is. And the build quality is amazing. So Chinese production methods and manufacturing is outstanding. But but when we say a, a Chinese bike, I wonder, I think we mean a Chinese brand. Like, let's talk about the big brands, Specialized, Trek, Cannondale, um, YT, yeah. Yeti, yeah. like all, all the yeah. big brands. You wouldn't think that they are... A Chinese bike, but the likelihood is their bikes are built in factories in in the Far East, right? Yeah. But what's the difference between that and something like the the Chinese e bike that I built, which is affectionately referred to me as the cheap, the and cheap. lots of people online now build their own versions of these. Look at that! There's even an article on the cheap. Yeah, I think I th- actually, funny enough, I just had a thought. So when we had Troyden on the episode the other day, he kind of he almost explained the differences. These, you know, a lot of these Chinese frames that we see on our websites like AliExpress, DHgate, Alibaba, whatever it might be, they're like what we call a catalogue frame, right? The, the, Troyden mentioned the differences in terms of what goes into it, the 3D servicing, stress testing, and the design, you know. A lot of these bikes are coming with like 68 degree head angles for 170 bikes. So they're not, they're made probably the same manufacturing process, maybe not quite as keen eye on terms of quality control and checking that, but it's just outdated, I think. I think mm. it's not not cutting edge because wow. the R&D that goes into new, bigger, modern brands is probably the thing that's pushing them apart. Yeah. I wonder if some of it's like trends, like are marketing people that work for e-bike com- bike companies really good at marketing and finding the latest trends like geometry? Not, not that that is a trend, but there is certain trends within it. And I wonder if uh, some of the brands that aren't like the, the recognized brands, they, they're not maybe on those trends. But let, let's just go back to the Qi. Will, if you can bring that, that up, because you say that maybe the geometry is not quite there, but that I built that in like, I don't know, two years ago. And it it's like got 63 and a half degree head angle. It was a mullet. It's Seriously? One, yeah, it was like 170, 150 travel. Yeah, gnarly. Look, the frame cost me 680 pounds, man. Like for dollars. dollars, 680 dollars. That's crazy. Look, for a car, full carbon, the motor, which I actually have here, is a Bafang M500. They've um, now... But we see, that on, we see that on bigger name brands now. That was on yeah. the Vitus, uh, the two Vitus models before they ended up, you know, unfortunately kicking the bucket. But... There's, you know, Bafanga are, are, are cons- 
I'd say are considered one of the ma- major players in terms of e-bike motors and you generally find them on more price point but it doesn't it's not to say that they are budget in terms of what they can do that they you know I would say that Eberfang bar maybe some of those nuances is comparable to a Bosch and yeah. Shimano. I think over the last couple of years it's definitely become more mainstream because it was in bikes like the Forest Owl and it's it's now in uh, or was in the Vita spike but but back in when I did this video it was it was one that you might have seen in the more like home build kind of community um but it certainly wasn't like didn't have maybe it didn't have the same reputation as like a Bros or a Bosch motor because not that the the performance of it was was that much different but it didn't didn't seem to have that same I don't know. Is the word kudos? The je, ne sais, kudos? Je, ne, je ne sais quoi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Will, looking at that bike, what what do you think of that bike? Like the, you know, bearing in mind it was a couple of. Did couple you? Of years I didn't ago. realize you sprayed it yourself. Yeah, I man. was just about to say that. I, I I never actually watched this video, Rob. Sorry. This is. <laughs> you can watch it now. Give uh, me a thumbs up. Oh, you got to give me a thumbs down. Well, <laughs> well, listen. He's um, not a fan of the team. No, listen. I gave it a thumbs down until I saw you. You resprayed it yourself. Now I'm going to give you a thumbs up because that is. <laughs> and is it that, came out so good. Look is that how you watch YouTube videos? They do put on a thumbs down. <laughs> yeah. Until they do trust no good. one. You have to earn my trust and Just respect. How it is. That that paintwork, even looking at it now, I'm like, that does I did a pretty good job there, didn't I? The yeah. only thing I would say is yeah. you've got a Mondraker t shirt on whilst re spraying a Do Chinese e bike. Yeah. Hold on, when it comes up. That should be illegal, eh? Oh yeah, yeah. No, that but you know, I was, you're a proper professional, aren't you? Yeah, look at that. That's actually like Yeah. My my workshop stunk of like <laughs> paint fumes for about a month after that. But you did a good job. Like I I thought it was like a legit paint job. Nah. But that's also a testament because you know these these we say Chinese cheebs they they all look legit. <laughs> they can do. <laughs> yeah. No, look at this one. This um where was it the car the the this one rock can. It's like they're taking the rock rider. <laughs> What's it called? Rock can. Rock, can it though? Rock can. No, look, look that that looks better. To then that high bottom, um, maybe I shouldn't say. You can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a this is a better looking bike than a lot of the current e bikes on the market, other than the Rock Can. Uh, a funny name. And Rock the, Can, but they've been clever as well. Like they, it's like what um, people do, where they they make the down tube of the bike up black to make the bike look slimmer, mm. and they've done it on both sides of the down tube. It's like clever little things like that, and they've made it mullet. It's like stuff is filtered. Like these, th- this is obviously some part of the factory that's making a lot of other brands you'd expect, or you know, there's there's crossovers. So they've kind of just taken bits of a lot of different bikes from a few years ago. It's kind of just filtered into, oh yeah, okay, we're like three years behind in terms of frame design, geometry, and those little nuances. We use a motor that's a bit older, but it's at a price point. And I think when you built the Cheap, was the was Bafang and uh, you know the Bafang support network should we say well known enough because I think warranty support is probably the biggest thing so if you have an issue with your Bafang motor nowadays you can get it sorted honestly I wasn't even bothered about that I was just fascinated with if I could actually buy a a frame with a motor and a battery because at the time a couple of years ago we're at the peak of like the the e-bike pricing most bikes were like eight or nine ten grand and the ones that weren't had big bulky batteries on them so i I was just focused on building an e-bike that worked and was carbon and weighed quite a respectable weight for four thousand pounds or four thousand dollars i can't remember how much it was Mm -hmm. but let's talk about this this frame a minute because it's built by a company called deng fu deng right what a name deng deng it's better than rock can (laughs) that's such a weird name but rock can it can (laughs) trust me so deng fu actually build e-bike frames for reputable companies. Like Bob. Yeah. <laughs> they called you Bob. <laughs> Why I, did they call I, you? I let that one go. I, I, did, I didn't like it. <laughs> even though your email is signed off as <laughs> Rob Hansel, it even says Robin Hansel at the bottom yeah. there. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call you Bob from now on, that's it. Thanks. But yeah, so I, I wanted to build it and um, just see, I wasn't bothered about the support network and all of that stuff, but Deng Fu build reputable bike brand, uh, sorry, reputable bike companies use Deng Fu, I should say, yeah. as, and there'll be some that might really surprise you. So I know they are a legit and they do make their own catalog frames. And I think the difference with the catalog frames is maybe the people that are designing them, I don't want to talk wrongly about the people that are designing them, but they might not be 
bike riders. They might not know that a head angle should be this for this specific task or the bike should look like this. And they or they play it safe because you start putting slacker head mm. angles on things. You start making, you know, modern bike frames with a really steep seat angle, slack head angle. You're putting stress points at different points in the frame so they have to reinforce them in different ways. So maybe these companies are just going, well, the design of this bike is solid without having to add loads of extra bits and try and make yeah. these weird and wonderful. So maybe, you know, maybe it's just a safe option. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. And uh, and I think, you know, if we're talking with the brands where a lot of people won't necessarily be able to be covered by warranty, you know, requiring sending it back to a factory in Asia isn't necessarily that realistic. So I think maybe maybe the carbon isn't as thin. Maybe they haven't tried to be risky in any ways. Maybe they've just made it heavy and solid to try and reduce any issues. I think that might be a good safe bet to say. That is a thing to mention, isn't it, where you say about... Um sending it back like the shipping alone on this bike is 263 pounds and they're getting a discount because they do it from bulk from like, their place in china it's a big commitment isn't it like once you bought one of them there's no going back pretty much unless well, you're flying to china <laughs> you could fly it back yourself yeah. <laughs> i just i just I f well i think you should get one of those as a little project yeah, yeah, yeah you can be a rock can rider but you're paying or i'm paying it would be a cool project i mean the whole thing is 1389 that, what does that's that give motor, you? That's, there's so many options on this page. You can yeah. get frame and battery, yeah. single frame, frame and motor. Oh, frame and different motor. So frame, frame and battery and motor. Yeah, you'd want frame, battery and motor. That's two I mean, grand. This is just, I guess, all the... It's just the motor and, and the mounting. Yeah, they, right? Look, look at the chaining. price of it. It's, it's really yeah, attractive, isn't it? motor. So is that carbon? So is that a carbon? Uh, yeah, carbon yeah. So it's yeah. a carbon yeah. e-bike. So that you don't have to worry about because I had to source the parts separately. So, so that you get it all. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I got stressed. Sorry, strange. Anyway, so so the whole bike, well, the bike frame set, motor, battery is one thousand. Was it with the battery one thousand eight hundred? Uh, one seven eight nine. One seven eight nine plus your two hundred quid shipping or whatever. So it, for two grand, you're getting a, a frame set, motor, and a battery, and it's a carbon bike. But you're still going to need to add all your other stuff to it. But you know it's. Not bad. Is there a geometry chart on there? Um, before we get into that, I've realised that I made a boo-boo. They say that you got there's free returns within 90 days. But is that yeah, only yeah, if you ship it back and pay shipping? Potentially. Yeah, and again, it's they'll make it as difficult as possible. And you can't ride one of these because the sizing only goes to 185 centimetres. What does that mean? That means Oh, height. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if you're 186? Well, you can't ride one. No, that's it. Out of that's out. No, that's just like size. That's just a size, size guide. Guide. Yeah. yeah, come on now. We're giving them too uh, much stick. <laughs> no, but the case, but so I guess the biggest pitfalls of this is like geometry, understanding, you know, you don't, it's a mixed bag of how the quality of the frame is going to be. Oh, two year warranty. Yeah, but if it's from a reputable company like, like Dengfu. Yeah. Rock can. <laughs> we can't. We can't you, authorize rock can. You need to. You need to. There needs to be some kind of like due diligence or research done yeah. on the company, and that's what I did with Dengfu. I found out that they'd made. Do you remember a bike brand called Stevens in Germany? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah lots of those bikes are Dengfu. Oh, they, yeah, they make decent bikes. And and you can see the angles on the frames. They use the same kind of techniques on the the top tube to the seat tube. They've got this like rounded, and you can recognize it. So, and I heard through one of my contacts in the industry that actually they are like one of the the best suppliers of frames fr from that particular region so it's like, oh, okay this is this is legit my 650 dollar frames actually gonna gonna so, work and it's gonna and we tested it we we rode it quite a lot and uh took it to some dirt jumps and stuff and it 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 was really good and i think for four grand it was it would it exceeded my expectations it was well quick as well <laughs> really like, quick illegally quick no, I don't, I don't condone that sort of stuff. No, no. <laughs> Unknowingly. But, but no, but so again, like you said, it's due diligence. So I know on AliExpress you can filter by like reviews, you can see what people have said. Generally you can you can see there. But what what was quite good, I've I have I put my hands up, I purchased carbon rims from You know China. it's not a crime. You don't no. have to put your hands up. <laughs> no, put my hands it's up. Not so, well no, because it's like you you know, you kind of you feel like you're doing something backhanded and going down like going back door. I'm getting I'm just getting Santa Cruz carbon reserve wheels from the factory without anyone knowing. Like But ironically, naughty. they they might they might be produced by the same people. That's what I was like, told. Yeah. That's, so I so in, in talks of due diligence, I messaged the company. I just said, 
the the company that were offering they were offering custom sizing so you could choose your you know if you want a dh thickness of carbon if you wanted to go 40 mil 30 mil internal blah 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 i went for big old boys like 40 mil external diameter really chunky and they were solid mm. like they're really really solid and i actually cracked a rear in the alps um on the chambry world cup track the first time i ever rode it and I contacted them for warranty and they sent me out a new pair in two weeks. Really? And they, how much were those versus like a pair of Santa Cruz reserve wheels? They were, the pair of them was like just over 300, I think, off the top okay. of my head. I built my own, my own ones up, so it was just the rims. And they said, oh, we checked over our our scans of when we made them and there wasn't any imperfections that we could see, but we'll take your word for it as benefit okay. of the doubt and we'll get... The only thing that took time was shipping. Yeah. Really good service yeah. otherwise. And... Um, so, so you've got like the home home build stuff, like the, the frames that you build yourself. But actually, there's a lot of brands now that are Chinese bike brands that are releasing like the complete complete packages. And we've seen some at Eurobike over the past couple of years, but now we're seeing more and more enter the market. And and one that is hot off the press is um is, is DJI. Like DJI are a, a Chinese company, yeah. and the bike frame is I don't know. I'm speculating, but likely made in mainland China as well. And um, we have no, you know, you, you don't have the same connotation as as one of the brands that you don't hear about. And I think a lot yeah. of it's marketing, isn't it? Like yeah, a lot of sure. it is like you, you have a brand that you've heard about and you've seen and you, you have this trust. And then when there's a brand that you're not too sure about, you kind of are maybe put off a little bit. But Rock Can... You can't hold rock can responsible because it might just be Jim in the factory going, ah, I'm going to make an own broke brand. You don't know who's behind it. DJI have a lot of products. They've got a lot of support. There's, I think that's probably the biggest part of you investing into it is knowing that the company is in fact legit. Yeah. You know, True. if I've worked in warranty and I know there's a lot of people who get upset and uppity and they want to go, oh, I can throw a court case at you. I think people want to have a grounds to be able to say, if something really goes wrong, there is a company behind this being able to yeah. help resolve the issue because no one wants a broken bike, broken injury, and feeling horrible, and then without any solution. People just want to be able to have an understanding of what can be done next. I think even more with e-bikes, and even companies like some of the direct-to-consumer companies are only starting to now be viable options for people with e-bikes. And I mean, what I mean by that is. A lot of people are concerned that if something goes wrong, they want to be able to go to a bike shop and, to, and wheel it in and say, my bike's not working, and then fix it. I think there's more trust now in brands like YT, where they've got the mill, yeah. that they can go to for support. But um, even... Yeah. even I'd, I'd argue to say that most most direct sale brands that are worth their skin at the moment will have like a, a service hub in, yeah. in most countries. Or if you're in Europe, then mainland Europe, then you've got a lot of facilities but then the uk you know propane yt canyon they've all got service yeah. centers here ribble you know there's a lot the, the list goes on so i think you, you know you've even got that security of knowing that those companies have got your back and even like for example bafang if there was a if i know there was a bafang service center i'd be less worried about buying a bike because the motor is more of a concern than the frame yeah. now i think that bafang are opening up a center in the uk they're definitely doing some more european based stuff and then, you know, I've got a couple of Bafang motors here. This is the M820, the, the lightweight one. And, you know, they look... Oh, they look, they look just, keeping. Just as good as any any motor out there. I think, like, you mentioned the, the direct-to-consumer brands having hubs. Like, Canyon do something really good, and I think probably some of the other places do, where they partner with local bike shops. Yeah. So they've got, like, I don't know, 50 over the UK that you can go to for warranty support. And I believe that they actually pay the labor charge for the bike brand, the bike company, so you can actually get your bike fixed there without having to ship it back. Or if you need to ship it back, they'll like arrange all of that, which is pretty good, which obviously you're not going to get, or I don't think you get, with some of the companies that we've been talking about. The Recharged podcast is sponsored by The Electric Bike Shop, the e-bike specialist. They've been selling e-bikes since 2017 from their first store in Bristol. And since then, they've rapidly grown from that single shop to now 10 stores across the UK with more planned for 2024. The Electric Bike Shop supply a host of major e-bike brands, 
plus a ton of parts and accessories in stock. The electric bike shop are highly reviewed by real customers, and they've achieved an excellent status on Trustpilot.com with hundreds of reviews. They offer free UK delivery, highly competitive pricing with price matching, they take part in the cycle to work scheme, and they carry literally thousands of e-bikes in stock for quick delivery. They also offer test rides where you can get hands-on with the bike so you can try different sizes. There's really nothing like getting on a bike and trying out the size for real to make sure you get the right bike size for you. So check them out at theelectricbikeshop.co.uk where you can see the range, or you can even book a test ride direct from their website at one of their 10 nationwide stores. Thanks again to The Electric Bike Shop for sponsoring the Recharged podcast. What else did we find, like bike brands now, that are selling their, their, their entire bikes? We, we talked about one called Hybridizer. Yeah, I wanted to mention Hybridizer, because this was actually quite high on my list in terms of a bike that I was considering. Mm. It's a pretty interesting bike. and High pivot. High pivot, really yeah. uh, adjustable dropout, so you can choose 29, 27, three positions of shock progression and frame adjustment. It's it's a super customizable bike and it's got, you know, it's got a buffang motor. I think it's got the M5 to 20. Yeah. Off the top of my head. They've got their own carbon wrap battery that brings it down. It's got 95 new meters of torque. It's a 180, 160 mil travel bike. Like it's it's up there. Looks really good, actually. I and don't... again, it might be a Chinese... This is, this is where it's maybe these guys are starting to separate themselves. Because yes, it is a Chinese company, but they've got designers in. They've got a full team of people behind the brand, not just, we've got a factory, we're making other bikes. Let's just do our own one because we've got the ability to. Is that a storage? This here looks like it's actually a storage bit in the frame, which I don't, we don't see in any e-bike, do we? It says I'm... full of the storage. Yeah, so, so this what... is the tool thing. Yeah. So then they have the bottle and then they have this little bit here, which looks like a little trap door. Mm. Oh, yeah, because the, the seat tube length there, is something to be questioned. I wonder what you could fit in there. <laughs> what could you fit in there? <laughs> a little stash place, isn't it? But yeah, that's the seat tube length. You probably fit an 80 mil dropper in that bike. <laughs> yeah, literally. The, where does the cable go? That That's questionable. I think aesthetically, it looks... It looks that's a good looking bike. It's not bad. It's definitely not a catalogue frame. I, I'm not quite sure the brace between the seat tube and the top tube and the, the insertion depth. Like at this part. Yeah, it looks yeah. like you can't get a long dropper in there at all. It might be an optical illusion, but yeah. But that's, that's a good example. And they're basically... How much is that bike? They're they're selling to the UK, right? As yeah. a complete package, and it's, it's not... no, it's a frame set. They don't frame sell set. us a complete bike. Oh, okay. So yeah, I because I looked into this, but it's not a bad price for the for the frame set with battery charger, everything like that. They've got two charger options, so a six amp or a three amp charger. So obviously, six amp's going to charge a little bit quicker. But geo numbers are spot on as well. Yeah. So head angle is where is it? Head tube angle. Why pie? Sixty three point eight, sixty four point two, or sixty four point six in the three different positions. And it's 2749. Yeah, 2749. USD. That must be plus VAT and no, stuff. No, 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 it's included. Because I've, I've, I've scanned over this quite a few times. That's included. Is it carbon or no, aluminium? No, aluminium. 2749. Which is also quite interesting because I think you find a lot of the Chinese bikes that are coming out of the factories are carbon because it's probably easier to produce a carbon frame than having an aluminium jig and welding it up. So that bike is £2,100 shipped. And tax included. Yeah, but no rear shock and no other components. Other yeah, than but you can components. get a rock can, bro, for <laughs> less than that. One eight a rock can was. Would you rather be a hybridizer rider or a rock can rider? Hey, Will, what, what bike are you riding at? Riding a rock can. With, so one of the things with hybridizers. Rock can, Bob. I was <laughs> looking at hybridizers Instagram and they've actually got like Chinese riders. So they've got like a sponsored riser roster and they've got like there's enduros in China, which mm. you know we don't really hear anything about. So it's like there is an emerging market there, and so these guys are cottoning onto that emerging market. I think they want to come over to Europe, and I think there's there's difficulties with it, but they're getting enough business from the Chinese mountain bike market. Well, that does look like a legit bike, doesn't it? It's uh, it's cool to see. Is is there any other brands other than uh, Rock Can and Hybridizer? Do we find any others? Um, um, yeah, we got some yes, on there somewhere. There's the ah, Frey. Ooh, Frey. Oh, that looks very similar to a Canyon Strive On. But it's high pivot. Oh, okay. And it's got some crazy weird linkage looking thing. Like a real weird lock, rocker link. Ooh, looks that cool. looks 
actually pretty nice. <laughs> Except there's a few things. The cable's unplugged at the front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've done that for. I just noticed that. <laughs> and and they've, oh left, they've left the stop sticker on the fork axle. But it's quite good because at least you know that is a real bike they've that taken a, a photo of. Maybe that's why they've done it. So what, what, what have they left unplugged? One of the cables that goes there? <laughs> well, up here, man. It's like... <laughs> yeah, look. And then the other part of it, the yellow bit at the top of it. They didn't even Photoshop it out. It's just the orcs cable. <laughs> But, okay, so if you look at the rest of Frey's bikes, they're all quite questionable looking. Then they've got this new dopamine range, is what they call it. They're yeah. not super cheap, but like, it, I, I think it looks pretty good. That bike that you were just on, Will, that green Canyon Strive looking type bike, what's the details on that? Is it Does it give you travel? Does it yeah. give you geometry and, it's, and price? It's got a Bafang M560. It's got a... F- Excuse uh, me, I think you asked me. Uh, yeah, apologies. You're stealing my thunder. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking, you go. Okay, it's no. got a <laughs> Hold on, it's got a 63. <laughs> go on, Will. No, give, us go. A, give us a headline. <laughs> I'm waiting now. You go, you go. Okay, no, 63 and a half degree head angle. So it's pretty slack. 76 degree seat angle, 445 drop in a XL. Ooh. TCU. Look at that. That, that oh. is basically that you specialise TCU esque, isn't it? It's very, oh, it is, yeah. very inspired by that. But that is okay. What's the controller thing? But it says electric it's throttle. Oh, is that, oh. It was all going so well. Is that the throttle? It literally says electric PAS plus electric yeah, throttle, but it's so. 130 newton meters and 500 watts. Oh, so yeah, you've got there's loads of different options in terms of travel and wheel size. It's I think it's a cool. I think it's a really like. That looks like a legit one, but if you go on their website well and go back to e the bikes, they've got a step through asymmetric rear shock fat bike. Oh yeah, full suspension fat bike. I, I don't that. know if I can say enough. There you go. The Co- CC what's it fat. Called? The co fat. The CC fat. The CC fat. I mm. mean that that's not that great a price to be honest with you. Like four and a half to five thousand dollars, but um, it has like legit. It's just, well, it's got Max's tyres, Bafang motor. Like, there is legitimacy to mm. do it. I've heard of Frey quite a lot, actually. I, I think that it's one of the more popular brands, and no doubt people that are riding those and owning those are, are really happy with them. And it might not be within one degree of where the prime kind of head angle is or seat tube angle, but for people that want to get out and just have fun out on a bike, I think that something like that is going to be perfect. In fact, that, that looks like down for, can it? Yeah. Is it? But as long as it's legal. Yeah, as long as it's legal. But, but yeah. in lots of places in the world, that will be fine. It's just, if it's not legal here, yeah, doesn't mean it's... It no, but I think, there's, I think there's options to be able to, because all these motors that have the possibility of being able to be put into their respective country mode. You know? Yeah, yeah. I do get lots of messages, um, especially over the past few weeks, where we're celebrating that DJI have bought out a motor that's a thousand watts and... You know, you've got these motors that are one and a half thousand watts and people are going, dude, I've had a 1500 or 2000 watt e-bike for the last three years. Come on, it's not new. But there's, like, there's a little <laughs> difference. Yeah. And yeah, because yeah, Bafang arguably have been probably one of the biggest manufacturers of different motors, but a lot of them we won't actually see available in the UK or in most of Europe because they are throttle or they're huge, massive peak power. They're a bit out of the realms of normal riding yeah. essentially yeah and the, thinking back around the biggest thing for me was was around the cost it was if i can get something that is just as good or 90 percent as good for half of the cost then that to me sounds like a really great great like bang for buck like why wouldn't you if you can get something that but now i wonder if the 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 kind of margins between what you're getting and what you can actually buy now are reducing, especially with the cost that you can get bikes for in the UK now. Like, you yeah, because when you when you look at that hybridizer and you look at the price, and you're like, it's a pretty good price. But you could but get look at the privateer. Other, that's what I mean. You could get full powered, full designed, up to date, modern, full full suspension e mountain bikes for maybe 500 pound difference yeah some of these with like sh- with uk warranty so yeah. you could get the privateer with the code that we had i don't know if it's still on for free 750 yeah you- and that's cheaper than you'd be able to buy that fray dopamine brand new yeah the with you know the cable unplugged yeah <laughs> that one <laughs> or the can i mean the can rock can might be a little bit cheaper 
But would you rather ride a rock can yes. for three grand? Yes. No, but <laughs> arguably, that. that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's two if grand. rock can that's... watching, fit, uh, I think, Will, you're looking for a new sponsorship. Give me that. <laughs> yeah. Rock can. Sorry, Adam, what were you saying? Rock can. For sure, rock can, if Will's riding it. Um, but if you add, so it's two grand for that frame set from rock can. Right. Uh, the, what's one, the, no, what's no, the frame was less. The frame by itself. Oh. No, no, no. Like the drive you and everything like oh, that. So shipping. with chip one, yeah, let's call it two yeah, grand. Yeah, okay. And what model is it? There's no name for the model. <laughs> it's electric bike frame, Coventry bike frame, two fifty what, two five hundred what? It's just yeah. it's just the rock can. It's just the rock. Can. There's only one rock can. <laughs> there really needs to be one. <laughs> um, but you put fork, shock, wheels, handlebar, brakes, everything on that. It's going to be way more than three grand. But yeah. you'd have. It's going to probably be closer to four. A dream <laughs> bike. <laughs> One of the best. In the Rock can hit us up. Will is all over this. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, do you know what? But like built up, that is not going to look too dissimilar to. Dare I say, like a, it's not quite transitiony, is it? But like it's a bit Scottish. Not, is not it? Scottish. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Scottish. <laughs> okay, you know the Scots. Scott. The, the not, not Scotland. Oh, Scot <laughs> not, like, yeah, Scottish. Yeah, not, not Scotland. Uh, not this one. May, maybe this one. Maybe yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's got the kinkies. Maybe <laughs> some kinks in the frame as well. Maybe, maybe, maybe that it comes from the same factory. Maybe like that Scott get there because you don't just get these one-off like carbon no, no, manufacturers. Way appear. too expensive yeah. to just build one frame. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's um, interesting. I, I quite like the look of that actually. Uh, it was all to your own. Well, maybe <laughs> maybe your next dream bike build. Maybe we'll see, won't we? We'll see. But I think there is there is legitimacy in them. It's yeah. the problem is like the lines are getting closer and closer, and I think that we're now settling into geometry that's been tried and tested for years, and it doesn't seem to be changing. We're not getting any slacker. We're not getting like 61, 60 degree head angles now. It's like sixty three probably is about as slack as you're going to go for the most part. Should we? So it's each... all. Oh, sorry. Okay. So it's all within that. So now these brands are c like keeping up with that geometry, maybe if it's slightly out. So as long as it fits as you need it to, and as long as you're expecting not to get the absolute cutting edge of technology, then the risk is what you take. Yeah. But arguably for a small amount more, you can get a legit frame that you've got full support in your respective country. Well, I was just going to say, because we we asked the question, didn't we? What should we Should we all give our reason why we wouldn't? simple reason why why what's holding us back from buying one yeah uh well i did do one yeah. but I, I think now the price is not different enough for me to and brexit <laughs> from a uk perspective well, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not brexit yeah. but taxes and income no, there's a lot more difficulty getting bikes in yes. because of all the changes in the laws and things like that so you would probably get slapped with tax which is going to be 15 percent on or so on top of that however i do want to add that i do have the bafang m820 and a frame to build up and this is from light carbon who Ooh. who have supplied this for, for like a project video and i'm really curious to find out what the performance of this is like versus like the bosch sx and the fazua give us some, give us some stats so this is 60 newton meters there you go so that's the frame that i've got that see that looks more legit than than the rock can don't you dare don't you dare <laughs> say that about my rock can <laughs> That looks, please, that looks Adam, a little please <laughs> that's enough for you that looks a little bit like the flyer up rock that yeah. lightweight bike with quite sharp angles. I, yeah. That looks quite nice. So, yeah, I think it's 60 newton meters and like up to, I don't know, 500. What It packs a punch, put it that way. And I've got a it's battery. It's probably more that's... comparable to like the Bosch SX in terms of power output than, say, like a TQ. And you know, lightweight e bikes at the moment, to get an actual like legit lightweight e bike, lightweight e bike, you have to spend a lot of money. Yeah. Whereas with that, you, you don't have to spend anywhere near. And the performance arguably might be better. You can build them long travel as well. So that and what's the bat? Does it come with multiple battery options? Uh, no, I think it's a four hundred and sixty thereabouts. So yeah, it's, okay, it's so not it is tiny. Definitely aimed at being a lightweight, and and you haven't built it up yet, or have you? No, you've seen the frame. I have seen the frame. Yeah. I didn't know if you built up or yet or not. But the question is, like, what what are we expecting weight wise with how you spec it? Like, I reckon it will be like nineteen kilos. It's, so it's maybe twenty. Sub twenty, yeah, yeah. It's not going to be like a. 
You're going to put triple comps on there and, and, Coil, and stretch out the tires. chain stays however you can. Whoa. That one's a bit weird, isn't it? What's that's, that? Yeah, that's, that's a, like carbon something. That's yeah. like the score frame. Look at the look at the linkage. Yeah. It's a bit like, like that score 6080 or 7080 frame. So, so there's people on EMTB forums that are building up these. So there's um, a whole community uh, building up these light carbon. We saw them at Europe. Didn't they have a stand at Eurobike? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing a lot yeah. of carbon. They're, they're definitely one of the more popular, um, like, frame suppliers. But there's even, there, there are, like, Hall, is it Hall 9 or Hall 6? I think it's 9. Hall 9 is a wonderful place at Eurobike because it's, again, a lot of these brands you haven't heard of. I think one of my favourites was, when I was there last year, was there's a brand called Royal Baby. <laughs> right. It's making a bike brand. But there was, there was also um, Heffer, H-E-P-H-E. -E. There's a, a motor brand... Heifer, without not not like cow. No, yeah, no. It's um, I can't like without being. Oh, harsh. H E P H A. Yeah, heifer. Yeah, uh, yeah H E P H A. And they they were in room hall nine or whatever it was, but that was like a quite a legit. And they've they've made their emotors, and it seems like, like you said, the lines between and this is gonna sound so cheap and legit are really getting blurred. And I think that. The only thing that will be different is your support in the country you're at. Yeah. And arguably, you know, if you're in China, well, great. You, you, why wouldn't you? Yeah. But that's so, where, like, w w as these things get more legit, will there be a Chinese bike brand that maybe doesn't even sell to Europe that is specced with a Shimano or a Bosch or a maybe. SRAM? Maybe. But, but why? When the Bafang stuff is really good now. It's it's a decent motor, decent power, decent weight. But right now we're talking in terms of like support. Okay, okay. You know, in me. terms of support, like I know right now I know where to get a Bosch sorted, I know where to get Shimano sorted, I know where to get SRAM sorted. I don't know exactly where to get Bafang sorted. I know there are places and after a bit yeah. of research I could do. But I think that's probably another inhibitor to someone buying this is is that and I think it will become the normality that Bafang will have better support in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that I think uh, we've mentioned it before, but mountain biking is a very, it can be uh, quite a trending fashion thing as well. Like you, you go on the trails and everyone's in their Troy Lee or their Fox stuff on their fancy like YT or specialized or whatever. It's like, people aren't going to have the same street cred if you're out on a light carbon in the Surrey Hills or in at like bike pot Wales. Although you probably get more people coming up and talking to you about it, I think. It might yeah. spark more conversation, but I think it doesn't have the same like cool factor yet. Yeah. Which uh, is one thing holding them back. I disagree. Like I was looking to get that hybridizer because I was like, it'd be unique. No one will have it. Be unique, and I'm a bit yeah. like if it shreds and it rides, then you can beat me out on this one, but give a beat me on the <laughs> You've been saying some mad sus stuff. <laughs> beat, give a fuck about. Uh, hey, that's why I was saying beat me out. <laughs> Don't say that. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what you're gonna say. I don't know what you're gonna that's say. That's why that. I say give a fuck about whether it's a legit brand or not. If it rides and it shreds well, and you've got and you've got a bike that you're happy with, then who cares? No, I I think Will, you're absolutely right though, because people really care about the brand. It's it's a fashion thing, cycling. Regardless of what we think, people buy based on the way it looks, the colour, the brand name that's on it. So I think that is a massive part of it. So, Will, I, I don't know how you're going to be feeling riding your light can. Um, rock can. Rock, rock can. Sorry. Don't disrespect it, light please. Can is the light, lightweight, light can is the lightweight version of that. That's the with sister the, company. With a Bafang, you know, 820. I'll just get you, the expert painter, Bob to respray my rock can. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty skilled at it. I, I think, pretty good. I think there is one other thing I want to mention on this, which I think is probably a bit of the elephant in the room, which is if you're not buying a legit brand battery, yeah, you've seen a lot of battery fires. Okay. So just to, just to give confidence in this. You're uh, still alive Fang, and you no, haven't got a battery no, that's exploded on you. The Fang have actually started their own uh, battery factories. And they are, they're pretty big. They've, they've built some big battery factories now. And some big battery fires. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're going to get us sued. <laughs> no, no, I love you, Bafang. Don't worry. And there's been no confirmed that we know Bafang factory battery fires. <laughs> so, uh, no, they've, they've yeah, bought yeah! the...
<laughs> they've bought their built their own like mega battery pack building plants and they're they yeah so now like they're i think as long as it's from a reputable company like bafang or you know let's be honest most batteries that are in these e-bike companies specialize they don't make them no they it's farm a mid them out. yeah mid but mid drive with the motor to be paired with it and i think that's where what we'd spoken about before where testing comes into it i think those bigger brands have so much more weight resting on the safety of the rider because of responsibility so they'll do more testing so they're not going to go out uh, this is what you expect you're not going to go out and get a battery that might explode and they go whoopsie whoopsie or even if they have a product that goes to market that is got problems they'll do a recall whilst bob for example, Bob in China <laughs> will send me an e-bike with a battery and a fat motor, and it might have been stabbed. It must, something might have happened to it, and he's not going to care. Maybe, maybe Rob in China is just Bob. Maybe, maybe that's just <laughs> what what we're called. When Robs go to China, we're just Bob. <laughs> Sorry, I'm never going to live this down. Just because one of my contacts accidentally typoed me as Bob. We only have seen one contact. It might be all of them. Oh, You're just called sorry. Bob. Oh, oh dear dear okay. me. So anyway, so other than the price, like the price has to be pretty attractive. The UK bike price in market, as the bike prices have gone down massively. So there's now not a significant difference, but I think there's still some curiosity for sure. Like I, I'm really looking forward to trying this lightweight motor, for example. And the M510 was like 100 newton meters or, or the the power on it was enough for me to think, oh, actually, I'd, I'd really like to try that. Because if you're going to end up with a product that's better for cheaper, then what's yeah, not to like? You? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, so Will, you got some stats there for the Bafang yeah, motors. Some stats, you got 95 newton meters for your M510. Yeah. 250 watts, 3 kg. Is that what? what it's, we, it's, cool. it's heavier. It's, it's quite, like 300 yeah. grams heavier than a Bosch race motor, but it's more powerful on paper, that is. And the next 10 one. 10 newton meters more powerful, isn't it? The F M600. Hold on, I've got to correct you there. It's 10 newton meters more torque. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people in the comments. comments. Yeah. We keep mixing up newtons and watts and yeah talk is power correct, and so. anyway yes. so apologies for anybody watching no. we mean well valid <laughs> <laughs> m600 uh 500 watts 120 newton meters and 3.9 kg yes that's, that's uh, quite heavy but more power baby that's the same power as the dji in boost mode yeah but it's like a kilo heavier more than a kilo heavier but have you had a look at the full buffang motor range yeah it's massive they've got some Big old boys, like the e-cargo bikes. It's like a 1,000, yeah. 2,000 watts and some crazy things. The so thing are the OGs for motors. Like yeah. They make so many. And I suspect they probably make a lot of parts for other, other motor brands as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So would you buy? No. Nope. Uh, you wouldn't buy a light can? Rock uh, can. can. Rock Please. can, sorry. Disrespectful. I think the one thing we haven't mentioned yet, which is, quite, which is the main reason I don't think I would go there, fashion no i did mention that is because you have to build it yourself a lot of these times that you, you only get a frame and a motor as a lot of people just want a full build and we haven't seen that many the hybridizer you can get in as a full no build. i you, think it's probably for tax reasons because as like, soon as you start selling it as a complete bike you'd end up having to pay a tax on the total bike rather than a component maybe i think troyden was saying the inverse of that yeah so why would they be selling a, just a frame only option i don't know not sure. Maybe yeah. hybridizer can message yeah. us and let us know. They mm. got the money. Um, anyway, what what have we got next? So we wanted to talk about um, bike weights because there is a lot around bike weight in advertising, in marketing, over the past few years in lightweight bikes, full power bikes, people suggesting that they don't want a bike over 23 kilos or they don't want it over 20 kilos. And there's big differences in the way they ride and the way they feel. There was a really good article out, or video, should I say, from Eddie Masters, uh, where he has been doing some great videos over the past few years on going to the racing and like filming behind the scenes and stuff. But he did one on the EEDR. And this is brilliant. What a great video, because he actually weighs their real race bike. So what are enduro riders that are competing at the highest level? What are the actual weights of their bikes? And it was really interesting because... I remember when the Yeti um, E160 was released, and at the time it was, it still is, uh, 
uh, a bike that was pretty lightweight, not crazy lightweight, but it was built for enduro. But when they weighed the actual version of it, which is built for enduro with enduro casing tires and like a pump and all that stuff on it, what was the weight? 26.1 kilos, the heaviest 20... of all the bikes out of the ones tested. So this is 26.1 kilos, right? If a, if a bike came out now and it had all these bits on it, the only extra bits I can see, it's got a coil, maybe it's got like a little multi-tool on it, and it was 26.1, you'd be like, oh, that's quite heavy, I might not buy that. But this this is winning, this is winning the EEDR. Just going to say, it was Ryan Gilchrist's bike, and yeah, he's just he's just won, he podiumed or won, yeah, play, he was P1 in finale, so he came first on that bike, the heaviest of all the bikes. Yeah. Weight means nothing. I, I agree. I, I agree. Well, Will, you're <laughs> side-eyeing me there. What do you think? <laughs> he just needs to go to the gym. No, I think that is it. I think different body... The weight does mean something depending on your body type. I think like we've spoken about this loads. But. Yeah. It's funny because they've, um, they've got the Lapier Overvolt at two points, but one's with a 540 YR battery and one's with an 800 battery between two riders. Oh, and I'm sorry, what were the weights? The weights were... So the one with the 540 YR was 23.56 kilos. And the one with the 800 battery is 24.5. So essentially another 800 grams, I think it is. For the bigger battery. No, it's almost a, it's almost a kilo. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost a kilo. 23.5 uh, to 24.5. Well, can you zoom in a little bit on that? So you can see but that's the, crazy because people we've got so many people saying, oh, I wouldn't get a bike that's, you know, why would I get a bike that's 23 kilos? I want 21, sub 20, sub 20. None of these are sub 20. It all depends on what you're doing as well because like when um, I, I build most of my bikes up with the heavier casing tires and put tools on them and, and, and they all weigh, like my crest line is like 24 and a half kilos, I think, and that's one of the lighter e-bikes but that's with a coil downhill casing tires and all that which kind of falls in the middle of those those bikes there but like as soon as you start putting on heavier casing tires and and building building the bikes to be capable for riding enduro tracks like finale you know it's rocky there's there's a lot of loose stuff you don't want to be you don't want to be getting a puncher on the first trail that you do because then you're walking quite far and you're, <laughs> and you're sad basically so most bikes, when you spec them up and build them properly, most e-bikes are, are ending up like this kind of weight. And even if you look at all of these different models, none of them are considered SLs apart from the Matera SL. And even then, still 22.14. Yeah, and that's and what what that's with the... Sh is that the Shimano? Yep, that's the new SL. So that's the crazy 63 degree head angle, um, slightly shorter travel one. And that's uh, Iago, Gary, who's riding that. And so then that's slightly smaller battery, but not massively. Full power motor, lightweight bike, but no one else is choosing to do, choose a lightweight bike, even though most of those brands would offer a lightweight option. Orbea, Pivot, Specialized, Canyon. Whoever this Don is on the S-Work Stump Jumper is probably having a pretty hard no, race. No, no. <laughs> so that, that, if, you, if, you, if you actually had a no look, just below it says Charlie Murray's non-EMTB specialist. I don't know. I don't know. Whoa, whoa. So what's the average weight there? Does it tell you if you scroll down a little bit? Does it give you um, credit to Pink Bike for showing this article? You can go and read it on their site. But it I think it... gives you an average, does it? it? No, but it... No, but it's it, looking around 24. Yeah, 24, 25, and then the heaviest, the race winning bike, 26. So, you know, I think weights of bikes, does it matter? Like sometimes, I, we spoke about it on a couple of podcasts ago. I find heavier bikes quicker going down and going up because usually they've got the more powerful motors and bigger batteries. It's a balance thing. It's a, it's a, it's a where the weight is distributed thing because I think too light and it can feel skittish, but if you've got, the the right weight for the bike and i think the lower you can get that battery and the lower you can get that motor lower in the frame lower in the frame but the yeti is not that low the yeti the yeti battery is not like some of them that are, have the motor rotated up and so they, sling the battery yeah. low the the yeti is actually more of a conventional rotated the shimano motor is kind of like that and the battery kind of sits above it yeah so and, and the other thing with that is like when you get the battery too low, are you removing some of that weight off the front wheel? 
You yeah, because it's not it's not as far forward. So, it depends on the full geometry of the bike. Because if yeah. there's not enough weight on the front, something I found on the Canyon Talk on, and this is not to say it's a bad bike. It's just that I think I got probably a slightly too big a bike with the large. The front end is a bit too high, and so weighting the bike, you need to really push your weight over the front. So if I had a smaller frame, it would automatically push my weight over the front. But the argument is, I preferred it riding with the bottle because the bottle would even give it a bit of added weight. And even it's got a 900 watt hour battery, that top end was the stack and everything was just a bit too high for it to really push down. So it's a really aggressive bike. Such a nice looking bike. It looks, yeah, it looks amazing. I, I, when I saw it, I was like, damn, it looks so good. And I know it's aesthetics and we're going back to that kind of fashion thing again, aren't we? But it does no rock can though, is it? (laughs) (laughs) It's no rock can, but it's, it looks moto and I I love the design. But again, I think the BB on that is too low low. for enduro stuff. And the battery is actually placed a little bit too low, but I don't know. Does, does bike weight matter now? Like we talk about it a lot and even the uh the sl uh the yt sn sorry i should say supernatural came out a lot of people are saying oh it's not light enough it's 21 <laughs> kilos it's but not. it rides so well rides really well yeah and that's the thing is like that's that's the whole point of it is it's it's just a really nice performing bike regardless of whether it has a motor or not but in the world we live in or <laughs> choosing that versus dji weight is a part of it so if you could have that with the better motor why wouldn't you and i say maybe not better but the different motor because the only thing you get the difference of between having the motor and battery from a different brand in that respect is just less distance and less power Mm, true would you get that if it had the dji motor 100 and the battery yeah would you 100 yeah so so would you get it as it is now no so, so basically, the motor and battery is stopping you getting that. Yeah. How about you, Will? I agree. And the screen. Okay. <laughs> is, yeah, yeah no, the screen got on there as well. Because the, the Fazua... Um, the Fazua screen's a bit limited. It's not even a screen, is it? No, it's a plasticky lump Rubber of thing. It's 3D print. It's not 3D printed, but it's it's very cheap feeling. It's got a weird, like, touchy touch feeling, but it's not... It's like scratchy kind of, yeah. like, feels like a really cheap plasticky... And do you yeah. know the names of the different modes on Fazur? It's like Breeze. It's no, it's like Green Green Wind, Red Dragon. Is it was it? like they or the, the Ride Fifty was that. It's like I think it's like Breeze, Wind, no, Ocean, like River. Really? Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Like, I'm gonna find them now for you. Like, yeah. I, we did the training on it years ago, and it was like I was like, wow, that sounds so wild. You I, know, Breeze, River, and Rocket. Yeah. And it used to be on the originally came out. It was like Green Breeze. Because they're all different colours, aren't they? You know no one ever refers to it as that. They go, oh, I'm in trail mode. Yeah, Regardless, or I'm in turbo. That's that's just purely because of uh, copyright reasons. They can't call it trail, eco and what? boost, probably. No, no one's got copyright on those words. Oh, they're just... Breeze, breeze, river and rocket. I'm in rocket mode, guys. <laughs> <Just like> stand <laughs> back. Whoa! 2024 child names, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> just need Rose in there. That's what I need. <laughs> It is. <laughs> this is my daughter, Breeze. Breeze for Zua. <laughs> um, but honestly, that, that bike does ride really well. Although I only rode it in Bike Park where we were lifting to the top and yeah. going down, it rides really well. We did, did a little bit of pedaling. But the thing is, regardless of the motor, you can still pedal it as a good bike. And I think I think the, the platform it's on is really good. It's just a shame that the motor itself is, I don't want to say outdated because it's not. Well, it's it came out in 2022, and I think the we, we did cover this already in last week's podcast, but the timing of it was unfortunate because all the hype was around that DJI motor that um, everyone's like, yeah, this is amazing. And then the week after, yeah. YT released that, and it hasn't got like the latest motor in it. And YT are really great at calling something an Enduro bike that you can't race in Enduro. <laughs> Like, they've created an enduro bike, so it's the best enduro bike we've made. It's not powerful enough to ride the EDRE, yeah. and it's got a motor, so you can't ride it in normal e-bike racing. So, it's true. I mean, you could e- ride... enduro is a race category, right? That's where it comes from. They're just calling it an enduro bike. They're not saying, like, it's an e-enduro bike and, like... Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go take that to an e- EDR race, and they'll go, yeah, off your truck. You haven't got hey, a motor in there. Hey, you used to work for YT. You're supposed to be defending them, not No, me. no, no, no. <laughs> used, to is the, used to is the key phrase in there. No, I think they've done a great job, and the paint job's great. Um, and the team have made, like, an incredible bike. It's just... It's not hit the mark. Okay. And I think that that's... It's sad to say. Oh, look at that. 
looks so good. It does look like a really good, good yeah. bike. Yeah. It and, is. And, it, you know, and even now down to the minutiae of like, has it got opinion? No, it hasn't got opinion. Has it got a DJI? No, it hasn't got a DJI. Has it got a ZF? No, it hasn't got a ZF. Has it got a Bosch even? No, it hasn't got a Bosch. I've got to say the Fazua has a bad reputation for reliability as well. There's, yeah. there's lots of reports online that people, and I know people, and I've had an issue, issues yeah. with the Fazua. So there's a lot of people that have had it. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, that having reliability issues and every brand has their pitfalls. They have errors. Things oh yeah, like, things happen. It's just limiting that amount. And if it's a known issue, that's that's if it's a known issue and things aren't being sorted, then then you've got an issue because that doesn't just affect the motor. That affects every bike that it's on. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, um, I, I just wanted to say that we did mention. I mentioned in the video that the. The, the control, the ring controller felt a bit like plasticky. Um, they've changed it. They've got a new updated controller remote thing. You know, they've got this like, um, it's like a, like on a toggle switch. Yeah, I really like, I, I like the idea of them. Zer Zerbel, Z-I-R-B-E-L are a company in Switzerland that make them for, that make a, like a magnetic ring system. Very, very similar to that for, um, for like DI2 or for Axis stuff. Yeah. And, but that's like super high quality. It's like metal machined and on a magnet floating on the ring. Beautiful. And I think they're taking inspiration from that. And I, yeah. I'd, I'd like a minimal control. So I think them coming out with that is great. Yes, it's much, it just looks, um, looks, looks better. There you go. So if you look at that, it's a much more refined um, looking unit. The other one was like, almost looked like it was unfinished. That sharp bits on the, on one of the sides, it, it looked really cheap and it felt flimsy and plastic and that looks a lot better. So hopefully we'll see more bikes being um, using using that one and hopefully you can retrofit it, I hope. I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, it's the same connection that goes what into... What is this button? Is that walk mode? Walk. Looks like it, doesn't it? It looks like a walk mode button. They've got the overrun, so, uh, like their overrun boost thing. But that's just going up to the top mode and then holding the, the you ring for You just hold it, it yeah. like up and then it puts it in its overrun. But I reckon that is the walk mode because the walk mode was quite fiddly to get um, kind of going, if I remember. Yeah. So sadly, they won't get that in America, will they? That no, they, they do, apparently. <laughs> I, I, it's certain states, I think. That's something I was saying. <laughs> sorry, I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, 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 it's something that's worth mentioning because I did I, when I when we did training with Shimano, they'd mentioned that walk mode was was a difficult thing in the US. So maybe in recent times, laws have changed. But so we're fact checking ourselves now. Basically, yeah. we we made a, a mistake saying that walk mode wasn't available in the US, yeah. but um, many commenters told us we were wrong. So. Um, thank you. Wrong. We're learning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every day's a learning day. Yeah. Yeah. But that's cool. That's cool that that's coming. And they're bringing out a bigger battery. So that's going to be. What's the size difference? It's the, the original is 430 and the new one's 480. <laughs> 50 newton meters. No, it's 50 watt hours. Sorry. 50 watt hours. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's something. A little bit bigger. Maybe it's a yeah. little bit lighter. And now we're seeing more e bikes, uh, e bike motor companies update the batteries of the newest cells that's basically given free not free but it's, you're getting more more watt hours yeah um, more energy dense batteries and you posted something the other day which was the the decline of cost of lithium-ion batteries yeah. has really dropped in the past like massive th two three years massively let me see if i can show you this so come on e-bike brands why are we not getting like 100 euro 800 watt batteries now come on i don't mind if they're big just get them nice and cheap how much is a battery normally it's probably it depends on what size and what model but like a bosch battery is probably about 500 quid really? for a 500 oh, yeah, um, range extenders are like 400 or something aren't they? yeah like that's what i mean three. it's like but it depends on what battery tech you know that that dji battery that's just up there that's probably gonna be like a grand really because it's the newest cell technology so the newest cell technology is higher density and Rob, we mentioned it in a podcast where Rob said basically that you're paying, how much more are you paying in terms of the cell, a higher density cells versus what you get percentage wise in terms of extra distance? A bike brand that released someone recently said they're paying up to 50% more um, and you're getting like 15% more battery capacity. But that, that I think it's all changing because the, the battery cost is now... It's, it's going down massively. So the price for batteries is down 51% in one year to an average of $53 per kilowatt hour. So $53 for a thousand 
what hours essentially that's chips chips that that's the sale price but it's gone down 51 percent in one year so batteries and and now the, the materials are becoming cheaper the construction methods obviously are becoming more refined their economies of scale means they're able to produce them quicker more efficiently we're not seeing that actually as an end consumer <laughs> i don't think so Come on, e-bike companies, let's let's get cheaper batteries. Like For I remember sure. the Specialized when it came out with the 700 watt hour was like over a thousand pounds, over a thousand pounds. It's probably cheaper now. I don't what? know if you can take a look at what a 700 watt hour battery pack from Specialized costs, but knowing that the cells are 50, what did I say, $51 for a thousand watt hours. Are we going to see different, different back Ooh. then? Bad. What's the price? 900 yeah. Holy for yeah. A current. Well, to be fair to them, that cost would have been baked in ages ago when they built that battery and they've had to have, you know, come up with the costings to be able to sell those to make money. But I'm hoping we see much cheaper batteries for end consumers. We're never going to see them ridiculously low because that's the sell cost and they need to be manufactured and the batteries have also got BMSs in them. Uh, circuit boards, all that kind of stuff, and they're packaged and built to fit in e-bikes. But we shouldn't really be paying a thousand pounds for seven hundred watt hours. No, when you think, well, something else to bear in mind though, that was probably purchased from Specialized when the original bike came out and would have cost that much. So, yeah, as much as the prices have come down now, them discounting that would be a loss from when they probably purchased it, which. Unlucky for them, they're going to lose lose out to the rest of the market. You know, if the rest of the market is able to drop those prices down, then see you later, Specialized. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit extreme. <laughs> you wish. Charging a grand for your batteries. No one's going to buy them. We, they we say want, selling hundreds of batteries a day, probably. We want one kilowatt batteries for a hundred bucks. Oh, that wouldn't be bad, would it? <laughs> that, that, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you could just take like three batteries anywhere you went then, couldn't you? Just stick them in the car and... And do you remember? Did you, fire. <laughs> did you remember um, Gary Fisher speculated at releasing a new bike brand called Morel? Morel. M O R R E L L E. No. So he last year, I think it was, he said, "Oh, I'm starting this new company called Morel," and they claimed that it was Gary Fisher and um, someone from Aerospace, I think it was, and they claimed that they were going to have the fastest and the highest capacity batteries. And you could char fast charge like 90% of the battery in like half an hour. There was all these massive claims. We haven't seen anything, but... Was this a dream you had? No, no, no. no. Like if you search, look. M-O-R-E-L-L-E, E-M-T-B, or E-Bikes. E They've got the website, which is just a sign up. But then Bike Perfect had an interview with him. We saw him, so, didn't we? In yeah, real we did. life. We did so, see yeah. him. They've got no, not much information on oh. their website. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Will's going to sign up for it. But there's a couple of interviews with him and gave some info and basically said the technology they're using. So maybe it's something not we're not so going to see a lithium ion battery. Nice, thanks. nice. Cheers for signing me up there. <laughs> <laughs> Never got my email just right, even anyway. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming in, guys. Good to chat e bikes with you and subscribe for more e bike content and we'll catch you soon. See ya. Cheers. See ya.